one, ready. Hello everyone, Bernina Jeff here in Grand Junction, Colorado. I am, I do a quarterly uh, article for my newsletter and this quarter it's on how to test and possibly fix your upper tension. I get customers in every week and they say, well, I was sewing along and all of a sudden there's a big mess underneath my fabric. So they use mess like this. See that mess? I'm going to demonstrate how that happens. And everybody comes in and says, I took all my bobbin apart and I cleaned it out and I started sewing again and the same thing happened. So they bring it in for maintenance. I'm going to show you how possibly you can test for this and fix it yourself. So I'm going to show you how it happens. I'm going to start sewing. Oh, by the way, this is my favorite machine. It's the Bernina 770 QE Plus. Look at that giant screen. I'm going to start sewing, and I'm just going to hit start here. And as it sews, it has a nice, smooth, and I'm going to release the upper tension. And now it has no upper tension. And it's probably going to make a racket. Stop. And then when it makes a racket and mess, you get this look underneath there. So that's caused by no upper tension. You can work on the bobbin case all you want, whatever, but it's not going to fix it. So let's step over to my demo machines and my props, and I'm going to show you what we're looking at. First off, let's take a close look up at all these different types of tension units. People ask me, well, just do a video on how to take a tension unit apart and put it back together. Well, look at how many different kinds of tension units there are. This is almost like a bar scene on the Star Wars, you know, all those creatures and everything else. There's, there's different types for every type of machine. So it's impossible for me to do a video on every one of these. But I'm going to show you how to test for upper tension at home and possibly clean out the tension unit you have. So first off, how does a tension unit work? A tension unit is basically two disks of metal held together by a spring to create tension on your upper part of your sewing machine. The upper part of the sewing machine has to have almost 10 times more tension than your bobbin case. So ever since the treadle, when you lift up the presser foot on your machine, a lever inside <coughs> opens up the tension unit. So when you thread it, the thread drops right between there. And then when you lower your presser foot, it clamps it together to make tension and make the stitch. If for some reason this tension unit is full of debris and stuff on the bottom side here, or in inside here it's got a whole bunch of lint built up, the discs do not go back together and they no longer function. And you will get big long things of thread on the bottom of your project. So that's how it works. And that's how many different kinds there are. So. Now, let me show you some tools and some tricks on testing. Uh, in my article, I went through three or four steps on how to test for uh, upper tension. So the first thing I say is remove your thread. So we are going to lift up the presser foot. We're going to trim the thread right above that guide. And then we're taking our upper thread out. So our upper thread is out of that machine. I'm going to raise my needle to the very top. And you always want to make sure if you can see your take-up lever on these older type machines, you want that take-up lever at the highest point. It's going to make it easier to thread, and that's where it's going to accept the thread. So I am going to raise the press of foot, like I said, and I'm going to thread the top. I always keep a little pressure with my right hand when I'm threading. So every model is different. So watch your model. So you're going to floss it through the first guide. I'm still holding out my right hand. I'm coming down and around the nose area of the machine. Coming back up, take up lever, I go from the right and I pull it back to the left. And most take up levers have a slot in them now so you can just get right in there. Then I'm still holding out my right hand, a little pressure. I'm coming down to a guide there. And I'm going to hook it into the last guide before it hits the eye of the needle. And I'm going to let go. And I'm going to pull on this thread. And this thread probably has two or three grams of pressure. I have a uh, 
a pressure guide here, or this is a tension guide, and it's actually rating at about 40 grams of pressure. Now, when I lower the presser foot, that clamps the tension unit together up in here. You cannot see it. And the tension unit should be set somewhere in the middle, between four and five. And now I'm going to pull on that thread, and look, I have over 200 grams of pressure. So I know I have good tension on there, so it's going to soak. Now, if I had this all the way by to zero, there is no pressure. If I had it all the way up to 10, it's going to break the thread. So if you have it at five and you have no pressure, then go up to eight or nine to see if the tension unit's working somewhat. And if it works at eight or nine, you can go ahead and use it to sew with until you can get it to a technician to work with. If you put it all the way up to eight or nine and you still have zero pressure, I'm going to show you some tips on how to clean that out. So that is this type of tension unit. I'm going to show you on these other two machines too, on the other tension units, how to, how to work on them. So one of my favorite tools besides my offset tweezers, if, if I had to go to a desert island, I would have to bring my offset tweezers. That's how important they are to me. But this is a hook tool. And this hook tool, it has a sharp little point on it. So what I do is I lift up my, my presser foot and I follow my thread path and I'm coming down that tension unit and I'm probing in there trying to see if I can't get any debris out. See, there's the thread that's in there. If there was debris in there, I go to the top and the bottom and try to get that thread and junk out of there. And this tool is excellent for that. The other tool that's excellent for it is a teeny weeny little crochet hook. You can take a little baby crochet hook in there sometimes and fiddle around in there. I really don't rec recommend non-technicians taking this whole system apart. So probe and try to clean. That actually, the, the slot for that thread was too narrow so that crochet hook wouldn't even go in there. So that's how you probe and try to clean things out. I've really got a look like the what's in the bottom of a uh, uh, box of Kleenex. It just is lint and debris and it all packs up in there. The other thing you can do is take a pipe cleaner and you can squirt it with a little Windex, something that's very low water base. You know, that's alcohol and it's going to uh, evaporate and not rust in there. And then I floss it in there. And actually some tension units have this extra little piece of metal in the middle. If you look at this tension unit, it has a disc on each side and a little piece of metal. That's a divider, so you want to work on both sides of those that divider. That divider is for when you're sewing with a twin needle. You put one thread on one side and one thread on the other when you're threading for a twin needle, and that keeps your tension for a twin needle working great. I think that would be a good idea for a video is how to use a twin needle. They're really cool. So floss both sides of that divider, and if you happen to have had a really strange thread that may have added some uh, oils or some waxes in there, that will help clean it out. Then once you've cleaned it out, do your same test, and if you have tension, then you should be able to sew. Now, that is kind of the middle of the road tension unit. The more advanced tension units, like on the Berninas, you can do the same thing with. And actually that divider is right up there. So it's easy to use this hook tool. Let's add a little light. And I'll do that hook tool on one side of the divider, hook tool on the other side of the divider, and underneath it. And see, it'll snag whatever's in there and get it out of there. And do your same tests. Now on electronic machines, you have to have them turned on. There's no dial up here for electronic machines, so you turn them on and you set your tension based upon uh, values on the screen. So if your middle value ha doesn't have enough tension, bring your value all the way up to 9 or 10, and if it still has no tension, then you're going to have to do the uh, um, deal with the pipe cleaner, and if that doesn't work, then you're going to have to take it in. Now, some of the original tension units are just put right on the nose of the machine. And they have a dial on there. See, this, this one goes from 9 to 0. 
And when you're at zero, there's hardly any tension on it at all. But even on these old machines, when you lift them up, if you notice that it opens up and now those, those guys will actually rattle and make a noise. And this is just a two disc system, so it, you can clean up between here even with the tweezers. And then when it's down, see how tight it is? That's working. If your machine does not open up the tension units when you lift up the presser foot, it's possible that this has broken inside there. You can still floss your thread between these discs, like you're flossing behind your molars and get the thread in between there, and it'll work great. Um, just do the same test. So I hope this helps you out with upper tension on how to test and how to possibly do some troubleshooting on your own and get sewing again. So thanks again. Remember, my favorite tools you can find on my Shopify account, and it's bernina-jeff.myshopify.com. And feel free to call the shop if you want to talk or order at the shop. It's 970-256-1293. Call after 9.30 a.m. Colorado time. Or you can visit my uh, website. It's www.hi fashiongj.com. Thanks again, Jeff at High Fashion.